As you guys know, this is such a hard video for me to film because um, before becoming a New York Times best-selling author, I, since a very, very young age, I really, really wanted to become an actress and I was made for the scene. I did theater and like, I just feel like I was such a talent that they didn't know what to do with me. When I went for my audition, they were like, you're the next Miley Cyrus. <laughs> and it's hard. It's really hard, you know, because I, I really should have been in movies by now. But I, I chose a humble, like a very, very humble profession, you know, and the show must go on and movies they have to be made so i decided to be a writer so that we could have more movies great movies with so many talented actors and actresses but anyway let's talk about my favorite movies so far in 2023 and i've watched i think about almost 15 movies and i haven't watched a single bad movie yet can you believe that can you believe that I feel like in the last few years, I've been watching less and less movies, but I've been watching them with intention. So I've been watching the ones that I'm super excited for. So that's what has been happening. I'm trying not to consume too much media, but I consume a lot of shows. So next year, I'm going to be watching more movies and less shows because shows are so time consuming and I hate Netflix for that. But yeah, these are the movies that I watched so far. I like most of them. I'm not going to give a rating because... That's just too much brain power here to use. So I'm just gonna go to the movies and say why I think it's a great movie and why I recommend it. Because I feel like I should have became a movie director in another life, but also an actress and also a writer. So like, you know, I'm, I'm still young. I'm still young. So in case, in case something ever happens, just come back to this video and be like, I knew her before she was a New York Times bestselling author and before she was an actress, and before she was a director. You can say that. You, my friend, can say that. Without further ado, let's get started. This is exactly why I don't film videos in the nighttime because my energy just becomes very chaotic. So I hope you enjoy. And if you guys like this, I'm probably gonna start making videos at night, but um, good luck with that. Okay, first things first, let's go to January. January, I watch one movie and it's the movie called Till Death with Megan Fox as the lead actress. That movie, when I saw the trailer, I'm like, I know I'm gonna love it. But wow, did that movie take me for a wild ride. I did not expect what was gonna happen in the movie. I really enjoyed it, honestly. I think it's interesting that Megan Fox is in this movie given the fact that she's still dating MGK. But it is a great movie as it like depicts like the nature of toxic relationship and it just shows how petty partners can be, like really bad partners. And I just love that. I love when movies like mix relationship drama with like horror, with like, you know, murder, etc. So I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. Honestly, the person that I watched it with thought that I was insane for enjoying such a movie, but one thing about me is that I love psychological thrillers. I love thrillers that are set in a house where the person is trying to escape the house. There are so many movies like that. There's one that's my all-time favorite horror movie in the whole wild world, okay? I love movies so much and it's called Hush. So if you haven't watched Hush, watch Hush and then watch Till Death. It's not the same, but it's that concept where someone is stuck in the middle of nowhere in a house trying to get out, trying to get, you know, help. So definitely watch those two movies and I definitely can direct and write that type of movie because I feel like my brain knows what happens like I, I feel like I can call out every time I watch those movies what exactly is going to happen or what I would do to make things happen anyways let's move on to the next movie so I watched four movies in February and I watched a total of 16 movies so far this year. So that's like a quarter of all the movies. So February must have been a good month. So the first movie that I watched is The Menu. I loved it. You have Nicholas Holt, great actor. Then you have Anya Taylor-Joy, also a great actress. These two together, uncanny pair. I didn't think we would put these two together. 
Nicholas Holt can play the arrogant fool or the arrogant goof so well and um, you know entitled prick because I've seen him also in the TV show The Great which by the way that TV show is really great it's about like Alexander and Catherine I believe that get betrothed in Russia anyways highly recommend that show too but Anya Taylor-Joy as a main lead is always a fantastic movie okay she portrays raw emotion like no other she brings the humanity out of that movie so basically the menu is like this elite menu that goes on i think every year where like a bunch of billionaires are invited to and some of them are supportive of the menu some people are critics some people are i don't know what they're like just rich bastards basically and this menu like there's this elaborate thing happening with the menu and there's like very elaborate dishes and it's like this entire poetic ensemble just to present this menu and we have like this insane plot and it's just like it feels like watching a play where you know the third act is gonna be the kicker and honestly i highly recommend it, it was a great movie and it will leave you like with your mouth open at the end. Say hi to Silas because he's like literally photo bombing, video bombing this entire video. So, hello, anything to say about the movie? Purring, okay, thank you very much. All right, so let's look at the next movie. The next movie that I watch is Babylon and Babylon was amazing. Honestly, it was amazing until like three quarters in where I couldn't tell what was gonna happen and then it ended up being still amazing. So we have Margot Robbie, we have Diego Calva, and then we have Brad Pitt, but we're not gonna we're not gonna mention Brad Pitt because I don't like that Brad Pitt, so who cares about Brad Pitt? But it's literally during uh, the Hollywood boom in the 1920s when Hollywood goes from silent film to sound film. And then you see this entire crew and you see how it's being made, how the movies are being made. We see the portrayals of women in the movies and just a lot of things happening at once. And it's just a very interesting look. I love self-aware movies about movies and I love like that entire setting like i said at some point in my past life i was definitely a movie director because these type of narratives just intrigue me so much and i'm like oh but what if they did this and what if they do that the whole story is like a fever dream and that's kind of like what it's supposed to feel like and it's it kind of echoes that feeling of like what if your world was black and white and suddenly you rose to fame and suddenly everything is in color everything is in sound and that's how you can see that like wild distinction and like that's like the common portrayal of Hollywood where you go into Hollywood, you go into LA and then you come out as a different person. You go in like a straight A person and you come out as a crooked person type of thing. So I feel like they've played really well with all of these themes and thematics in the movie. So I highly recommend it. It was a three hour long movie. It felt like less than an hour so that's when you know a movie was well done then i watched the second enola holmes movie with millie bobby brown and henry cavill and first i thought that i wasn't gonna enjoy the movie because i watched the movie halfway in or i think i watched the movie half an hour in and then i stopped it and then i wanted to pick it up again but i didn't feel so connected to it but when i picked it up the second time and i continued to watch it I actually really loved the plot. I found that the plot was more complex than the first movie, but it took longer to get into the action and, to, and into the setup and to get like invested in the characters. But once it did and once everything weaved together, it was brilliantly done. It was again like another tale about what it was to be in that time period in the industrial period and then how it was the treatment of women and the suffragette movement and i really like that they've included that into the storylines of both the first and the second movies i love that enola holmes and sherlock holmes mom is like this very active figure and she's like in the shadows but her presence is very much felt and it's very much carried through the character of enola holmes so i highly recommend it honestly i have no complaints i would actually even watch a third movie if they made one and the last movie that i watched in february is called alice darling and anna kendrick plays in it as the main role and it's very interesting because her portrayal is so raw i think in this movie we see a different side of her and the extent of basically her 
acting range. It's a very emotionally charged story. It's basically Anna Kendrick as the main character, like I said, Alice, and she is in this abusive relationship. But through this abusive relationship, she's been convincing herself that nothing is wrong, that everything is going okay, that he loves her, that he just cares about her, and that's why he's so controlling. And she has two best friends, and they don't get to see her as much since she's been in that relationship. And we see how that relationship manifests in these anxiety disorders and this, like, you know, fear-driven and, like, how she's, like, really, like, in her mind and she's trying to, like, protect herself, but she can't get out of it right and we see her two best friends as with their support you can understand that through love and loving support and loving relationships victims of abuse and of any kind of traumatic relationship like that and toxic partners can thrive and can be helped and you know i really like the message of the movie and not so fun fact but anna kendrick was in an abusive relationship for a few years so i think this role was perfect for her it must have been cathartic for her i hope it was i hope it was more that than traumatizing and i just appreciate that she took on this role and that she was so vulnerable and the portrayal was done beautifully okay so i kind of lied i didn't see this movie somehow on my list but in march i watched this hallmark movie with my sister and my mom and it's called made for each other and it's about this girl that like basically was manifesting like a perfect partner and then she accidentally sculpts one and then he comes to life like it would have been good as a novel but on screen with Hallmark movies is always like iffy so I don't think that this was a good movie like for me personally so let's just like skip through that one but that was accidentally in this pile of movies so I've had amazing movies minus one it wasn't a bad movie it's just not the type of movie that I would ever watch by myself I love romance don't get me wrong I love some Hallmark movies but this was not one that I pick when I pick a movie it's always a good one but someone else picked that movie for us to watch like during a family get together so that's why this is here now april was the craziest month because i watched seven movies in april first i watched everything everywhere all at once and it was again once again like a two and a half hour movie and it was like this sci-fi drama it was about generational trauma it was about choices that we make it was about relationship it was about divorce it was about like mother daughter relationship it was about so much more than like you know surface level how you could explain it and i highly enjoyed it it was funny i laughed and i cried i laughed and i cried i laughed and i cried and it was just such a brilliant movie and honestly like i don't know how sometimes people come up with this creative vision like i feel like whoever wrote this like was doing some kind of mushrooms but it worked it worked and it created this beautiful portal between this real world and this fictional world and how the two combine together and that this fictional world is like this friction that happened because of what's happening in the real world in the this main character's life which is the mom of the story and how she's having this struggle with her own parent with her father her aging father and with her husband and her daughter they seem to not have a good communication and they have like a lot of tension in the relationship and on top of that her daughter is a lesbian and has a girlfriend so there's a lot to unpack in this story highly recommend it no wonder it's been getting a lot of praise the father actually that was played by Kei Hui Kwan is the one that won the Oscar and his speech was so beautiful it was so like emotive and everyone was crying and so beautifully done and now I know why he won and it was amazing the movie was a brilliant success in my opinion then another crazy movie because it's brought to us by a24 films was Bo is afraid with joaquin phoenix as the main character who that movie was something to unpack i went to watch it in the cinema with my sister and our minds were just like okay and we both had like different theories going around about what was happening so again the fictional and the non-fictional world are kind of collapsing because of what the main character is going through and the main character is going through this very extraneous relationship with his mother and he also has mental health issues and he's also living in fear every day and he's seeing this therapist and then he misses his flight because a lot of things happen and then from there we 
so much happens in the story I, I i would have to sit here and talk about it like double the length of the movie itself and i think that movie again was about two and a half hours maybe three hours but definitely another movie to watch to watch for definitely a movie that i have to re-watch any movie by a24 like any other a24 movie the first time you watch it it's just like you're being hit with a ton of bricks and then the second time you're already prepared for the bricks you're just ready to like understand better and i do think that i cried at some point there was this one part of the story that was very emotive but yeah this was just like horrific again and uh i will say that it was unsettling this one out of all the other movies this one was the most unsettling movie but it was to be expected with a24 but you know you kind of hold on for hope that something good is gonna happen but then i watched ghosted with anna de armas and chris evans and that movie was so funny and honestly it wasn't how i expected it or I anticipated the movie to be in my head but it was very enjoyable it was a very quick watch i feel like those two together have such great chemistry on screen so it was a pleasure to watch them and anna de armas is just beautiful and like she just slayed her role all the way through and yeah it was just a fun movie to watch basically then i finally watched an older movie and it's called vicky cristina barcelona okay it's like a romantic comedy drama all in one where these two girls vicky and cristina are these american girls and they go to barcelona and from there a lot of things happen so vicky is the one that's actually getting married when they come back but her friend the other one is like the romantic is like the one that's like always like having new lovers etc so christina she's like that kind of girl and then vicky and christina one night they meet juan who's played by javier bardem and he's like oh let's go to this other place this other island me and you two girls and we're gonna you know party as in like have sex like have a threesome and they're both like well vicky's like hell no and christina's like oh yes so they end up going nothing ends up happening the first night and then this whole story of love just ensues but also like this story about like sexual freedom and about like what these two women want so vicky is like more like type a and she has her visions and goals set and christina is more like the romantic painter doesn't know what's gonna happen let living life whatever they both end up being swept around in this story and juan has an ex-wife and she is played by penelope cruz and juan and her they have this really like tumultuous relationship she's coming and popping in and out of the scene at some point there's like kind of this like polyamorous relationship happening but I will spare you like not that it's a spoiler or anything but this movie was interesting i will say that it was interesting it it for the people that are like more like artistically inclined that love traveling and love like romance and just love messy stories like character stories this one is definitely for you so i love those type of stories it reminds me of like sally rooney without it being anything like sally rooney sorry that was so bad definitely my job as a film critic would never happen but as a film director maybe then i went to the movies again in april and i went to see dungeons and dragons the movie that they made about dungeons and dragons and i really highly enjoyed it so the main characters are chris evans and michelle rodriguez and I don't know why but these two like they just work so well together so he's like the goofy whatever kind of jaded one and she's like the very stern and also jaded one but more like loving it's a story about the quest it's about this story about the quest of heart it's like found family and like chris heavens he has this daughter her name is doris and she's been taken away from him and he has to go and find her and save her and then there's this, like there's a lot going on i i never was involved in dungeons and dragons and i'm actually kind of interested now in learning more of the lore and listening to other people speak about it i don't feel like it's my expertise because i didn't know about like i knew about dungeons and dragons but i never played it but now i do want to play it and i really do find the concept interesting so there are a bunch of different types of players and different types of things happening in the world so i couldn't explain you for the life of me to save myself from you know explaining but 
I did like the movie, I did enjoy it, and it did pique my interest to figure out okay, what exactly are they playing as and what exactly, how does this world work? But it was very funny. If you love quests and if you love found family and family stories as well as stories about like, you know, good and evil and like kind of like morally gray characters, you'll definitely like this one. Then I watched this like romance drama called Perfect Addiction and okay, listen, a shirtless Ross Butler, like I had no choice but to watch it, okay? So like I've been watching him since 13 Reasons Why, so I had to watch it and I actually did enjoy the movie, again with the same concept of like toxic relationship. I watched three movies that have to do with toxic relationships so far this year and I think like it helped me because I have been through a toxic relationship. So they, these were just really well planned in my life. And so basically what happens is that this girl, she trains uh, boxers and she falls in love with the boxers she trains and it's her boyfriend of many years. And then this guy like cheats on her with her younger sister, which is like double the what the fuck. And this guy is chaotic and he's kind of like a loose cannon. She breaks up with him, but she's about to be broke and she has nowhere to live. And enter Ross Butler who's also a boxer and has a spare room in his apartment and as you can see she's gonna be training him I don't want to spoil more but again we have like themes of like female empowerment we have like you know the what's it like to be in a toxic relationship versus a healthy relationship what it's like to go to that journey of like self-love and redemption all this to say that it was not that deep but it is deeper than most movies that they make in this type of genre where they only focus on the love like we focus really much on more than just the love and the boxing was great too and i love stories about boxing and boxers so yeah i did like it i did enjoy it i do recommend it then i watched a good person and this was my most highly anticipated movie of the year i mean one of them and it's starring florence Pugh and morgan freeman and basically to keep it short but impactful florence Pugh is the main character she is about to get married to the love of her life and his his sister and her and her husband are visiting town and then when they visit Florence Pugh is the one driving them to a, this event that they had to attend and then an accident happens on the road because I won't say too much more but an accident happens on the road Florence Pugh is the only one to survive those two pass away and they had a daughter and then you know and obviously her husband to be so from there we see how it derails her entire life. And then from there, she starts to get addicted to drugs and painkillers and then enter in Morgan Freeman, who is the father of the sister that passed away and of the husband-to-be. So, and this father, he was an alcoholic and now he's not anymore. And through that, these two connect. And then there's that question of what does it mean to be a good person? So. I'll let you watch it. It was very good. I was bawling my eyes out. I really enjoyed this movie a lot and I made my mom and my sister watch it and they were bawling their eyes out too. So yeah, I always pick the best movies. Then in May, I watched only one movie and I watched Scream 6 and I loved it. I enjoyed it so much. Jenna Ortega and Melissa Barrera, they were both phenomenal as always as the last movie and I really hope that they're gonna make a next one. Like, I don't hope that like other people are gonna die or anything like that, but I did really enjoy the concept and I didn't put things together. So it actually did surprise me and I didn't know what was happening. So for that, I will say really enjoy this Scream. I think I even enjoyed it more than the last one or yeah, I did. I think I did enjoy it more than the last one, just a bit more. So if they keep on making it this fresh, I might, just keep on watching it so like i went on tiktok right after and like just kept like looking at the edits because i was so afraid before that that someone was going to spoil it for me so just glad that i held off because the spoilers are pretty big and the movie was fantastical and i just i, I loved it i loved it i loved all of it and here we are middle of june so i watched two movies on the same day this is what ends up happening if i watch a movie i end up watching two and that's why i stay away from movies so the other weekend i watched mi culpa and it's this spanish movie and it's been um there's like subtitles so i watched it with subtitles in english and it's like this like 
F1, but it's, it's not F1, but like racing, Spanish, romance, and the actress Nicole Wallace, I watched her when she played this mini series called Scam and she was playing the remake in Scam España. I've been watching Scam for years now, so I loved her in that and I knew she would play such a great role. This movie is exactly how you're supposed to adapt Wattpad-like stories and they did it so successfully. It was like two hours long and I swear to God, I could have watched six hours of it. It was so good. The premise is that this girl, Noah, she's moving away because her mom is remarried to this rich man and this rich man has a son of his own called Nick. And then Noah and Nick, they meet and there's chemistry and it's crazy and it's wild and they both love racing. And actually, I didn't know this story was gonna be really heavily relying on racing and that was like an extra because if i love movies about boxing i love movies about racing even more i cannot wait to watch fast 10 okay i i'm basic i'm basic like that what do you want me to say i am basic like that i've always loved movies about boxing and racing for some reason and it's not just because of the hot cars and the hot guys it's just there's something about it okay that's just how i grew up i don't know let's not cycle analyze it any longer no shame. But yeah, it was so good. The romance, I'm obsessed. The the story, I'm obsessed. The trauma, I'm obsessed. Like everything was so well crafted and little crumbs and little details and was so beautiful and the actors and their chemistry and they played in Scam España together and now they're playing again together and I can't wait because apparently there's four books in the series so they're gonna make more of these and oh my God, I'm obsessed. I, like, I feel like I'm a 14 year old all over again reading the after shoes on Wattpad and in a good way. Like, it was so good. Like, it was really good. Like, I need to rewatch it. Like, anyone that's watched it, they said that they had to watch it like two more times because it was so good. And then after that, I watched Asterix and Obelix, which is like a French movie, okay? And there is um, Vincent Cassel that plays in it. And I just found that movie so funny. Like. They, they have like English subtitles, you can watch it on Netflix. Pretty sure you could probably watch it in English, but because I speak French and because I grew up watching the animated Asterix and Obelix in Quebec when I was growing up as a child, I just wanted to watch it in the original language because it's so fucking funny. And that's what it was. It was really funny. The stories were funny. They I think they've used like modern references to make their jokes and like their, you know, tastes full tasteless jokes as well and overall i really just simply enjoyed it they really encapsulated the asta hicks and obelix relationship and friendship so highly recommend actually it was really good i feel like they also casted vincent cassette really well as julius caesar because he was freaking hilarious the whole thing was just a fun ride a hilarious ride if you want a good laugh you should definitely watch this movie Okay, we made it through. Imagine if I had 40 movies on this list because every other year I would have been already at 40 movies at this point, not 16. We would have been here for a while. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I've never done a movie wrap up video before and I definitely want to do more. And if I'm going to do more, then I'm going to start taking notes, okay? So I don't just say nonsense or try to remember who played what and who played who and whatever. All this to say, what are some of your favorite movies that you watched so far this year? What are some of the most anticipated movies you have so far this year? I could do a second video just about the movies that I'm fucking excited to watch in the movie theaters, okay? We have Oppenheimer, we have Dune, the second Dune movie, which is I think Dune Messiah so many good movies are coming out this year so many good movies and i will not shut up i will not shut up because i love movies so much i love shows too so if you want me to get into shows at some point i will i'm really bad at keeping track of the shows like i just know which ones i've watched and which ones i haven't watched but at movies i keep more track of and i used to write reviews i should get into the habit of writing that. I just write them down on my phone or on letterbox. Yeah, can't wait to make the second part at the end of the year and I can't wait to talk more about movies maybe on this channel. Let me know your favorite movie of all time. Let me know your favorite movie of this year and I'll see you on a bookish and writing related video next, okay? I promise this was just something to indulge in meanwhile. Okay, ta-da, adieu, C cut, bye. Um, I decided to be a writer. 
so I decided to be a writer. 